Is that a breakup? Break I think we have a situation right here. Hello? Hello. Hey, what's happening? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing exceptionally well. Thanks for asking. Apart from the slight hint of a cold that seems to be knocking on my door, so... If I sound a bit fluey, please excuse me, man. I'm doing my best to try and keep this in check. Okay, not a problem. Just <laughs> well, try that off with some ginger and lemon and you'll be all right. I've been told about the ginger, the lemon, the turmeric, the honey, the whole works. Yeah, I've, I'm trying the to stay whiskey. on top of it. Don't forget the whiskey. Whiskey, yeah? <laughs> mm-hmm. Burns it away. <laughs> <laughs> I might just chuck that in there this evening. Welcome to the Feeling Station. Thank you, thank you. And uh, thank you for making time for us to have uh, a quick chat about uh, your breakup story. Thanks for having me on your platform. You're welcome. And before we go too far, I need to let you know we're recording an episode of the podcast, so please do your best not to say your name, okay? Okay. I'll do it. okay. Now, for those listening to this podcast for the first time, it touches on breakup stories that people would like to talk about with a view to give you, the listener, a lesson or lessons that you could learn from our discussion today. Um, now, we're going to go straight into the interesting part, which is giving you a name, because one of the things that's working well for this podcast is we try and keep people anonymous. So I've picked out a name from East Africa for you. Um, and I will oh, name hey. Yay. <laughs> and um, <laughs> Somalia, to be specific. Okay. Uh, it's an Arabic name, because uh, that's the main language they speak there. And it's a very attractive name in the region. And it's Ayan, which is A-Y-A-A-N, Ayan. I, and I picked this one because mean? yeah, because that means lucky or fortunate. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you sound disappointed. Okay. <laughs> no, no, not wow. at all. I'm just, I'm just like, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to connect the name with my story. So I'm like, okay, okay. okay. So, so when there you we. hear the the meaning of that name, how how well does it connect with your story? Was was anybody lucky or fortunate? Was this guy lucky to have you? Were you lucky to have him? Where does luck and fortune come in? I was lucky to walk away in time. Ooh, nice. Jeez. It's not a lot of people who are able to do that, eh? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And here's the fun part now. You need to think of a name that you want to give this guy and be creative with this one. What name would you Uh, like him to have? I'll call him Vogang. It's... um, so to for um be thankful oh be thankful nice yes. um could you spell yeah. that for me b o yeah k a n g okay about kang did i say that right what kang like the k it has to be yeah so it's hard about kang about kang, about kang. Yes. yeah yes. Right. Kang. That, that's yes. about as 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 best as i'm going to uh, probably get, <laughs> get that with my K, my K's aren't coming out strong enough. <laughs> okay, so this episode is about Ayan and Wokang. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, hopefully, you can remember Ayan. If you don't, yeah, I should be able to to fix that in post production. So don't stress too much about it. Okay, Let's go straight into your lesson or lessons. What would you like people listening to this episode to learn from your story? Um, two lessons, or maybe you could break it down to three lessons. Yeah. But the first one being. Um, you need to be honest first and foremost with yourself mm-hmm. and um, it's a red flag if you find yourself lying to your your people, your circle like that's like a big red flag okay and the the second one would be um, do not compromise yourself or your principles just to keep a relationship if it if it if it's costing you your peace it's it's not worth it. Really? Mm-hmm. So, so, so don't break your principles full stop. Yeah. You know, just for the sake of other people. Yeah. I, th- I think those principles are probably going to come to life as we, uh, as we talk about your, your story, right? Okay. Okay, brilliant. So let's get straight into it. Um, tell me the top three things that you liked about Bokang. He, he was smart and he loved coffee like me. Just the way I like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like for real, he got me on that one. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. Uh, and um, 
just basically the fact that I I I was I was comfortable with him, mm-hmm. and I felt safe. Yeah. And, and yeah, so so that's something that really matters a lot to me when I feel safe with somebody. Um, yeah. Okay. So 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 uh, can you walk me through how you guys met? How did your guys' love story begin? Okay. So I was eighteen, nineteen. No. Yeah, eighteen when we met. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I, I just finished high school, so I was taking a gap year. Mm-hmm. And then I think in that year, sometime around March, February, March, I realized that I couldn't just stay at home and just, you know, just relax or just visit people because I'm, that's not me. So I decided to do um, a short course in IT. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so basically happened to be in the same college. Okay. So yeah, so that's that's how we met. I actually initially wasn't. Uh, he wasn't the one that I I liked. I liked <laughs> okay. <somebody. laughs> okay. <laughs> it's okay. I'll just settle for you, Bokang. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, just one of them. it's just uh okay. So this this other guy in the group, I liked him a lot, mm-hmm. and he would give me hints like, okay, maybe, but it's it was like. Um, he it was like I was a yo-yo, you know, like okay. he throws me in and then he pulls back, and so after a while, I'm just like, you know what, I'm done with you. It's fine, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You're just my friend. It's okay. And now with him, it was actually towards the end of the year that I started realizing that he was um, interested in me. Okay. And like I said, coffee got it because this one day we're just sitting. You know, we're studying, I'm tired. And then the next thing, he brings me my coffee from Mug and Bean Mm -hmm. with three extra shorts. And I'm thinking, how did you know that? (laughs) (laughs) Did you you ask him the question about that? Did you ask him how did he know exactly how you liked it? No, I didn't. But I think my my, my expression, the expression on my face Mm -hmm. kind of said it. And then he's like, well, I I realized that you like coffee. I'm just like, huh. Okay. Mm. And then after that, he would bring, I'm a foodie, I love eating. So he would bring lots of things yeah. for the group, but I realized that my portion was always bigger, more than everybody else. Yeah. 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 And at this one time, um, he threw a, a big fuss because he put my stuff like at, at my seating place, but I had gone out. And then when I got back, somebody else had taken my stuff. Oh. Ooh. So I was like, ah, oh, man, he likes me. So I think that was when I started like paying more attention to him, and I totally forgot about the other guy. Yeah. So, so had this guy been dropping hints about Kang? Had he been dropping hints from a long time ago, but you were oblivious to him because you were fancying the other yo-yo guy? Maybe. Hmm. I, I, I'll I, I'll confess to this. I, I I've been said to be a bit slow on the uptake. <laughs> a bit slow. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to guys and what, does that, that, so, what does that even yeah, mean? I, it, it takes a lot for me to see that um, That someone is feeling me Yeah Okay Because I tend to overthink Like I'll see something and then I ignore it I, yeah. I, I, I think sometimes and a lot of the times I, 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 I rather think negatively about something Instead of thinking about it positively Okay So yeah. All right. So, so, so this guy brings you a coffee. Uh, you know, then he gets upset that somebody's taking your food, and then the penny drops for you that hey, this guy, you know, is probably feeling me. Did he make it obvious to you at some point? Did he eventually say, "Hey, Ayan, I like you"? On the last day of school. Oh, wow, the last day of school. You know. Last call, the last day, and we all just you know like are wishing each other the best. Like, okay, are you coming back? Where are you going? What are your plans? For most of us, it was now I'm going back to you. Like, yeah, in our crew, we were we were mainly the smart kids, and yeah, yeah all of us had just decided, yeah, this gap year thing, yeah, it kind of worked, but yeah, no, it's uni after this, you know. So, yeah. So, did you guys live in the and, same town at least? Uh. Not, not really. Okay. I was, I was, in, well, at the time I was in Johannesburg, mm-hmm. um, and he was also in Johannesburg. But then I was in the east, and he was in the south. Okay. No, no, no. He was in the north. Yes, north. Okay. Yeah. So it's 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 long distance, but it's not like somebody's in Japan and the other one is in the US. You know, it's it's not that 
that kind of distance. At so, that time, let me say, at that time. At that time, it was okay. like distance. Yeah, at that time, we were in the same place. Okay. But then, like I said, all of us are thinking of going, you know, to further our studies. Okay. So, yeah. So now it's at the end of the year. And then that's when he sort of like, he's like, hey, so let's meet up. You know, now he wants us to go and date and stuff. And mm. uh, there was a family, there was a family emergency on my side. Mm. So I couldn't, we couldn't even go on a date that I'm just like, okay, maybe when I come back, mm-hmm. we're going to make that happen. But mm-hmm. next I had to um, go to, to go home in Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And then he also, he, him and his family were going on holiday and he was in Australia. So, that whole, yeah, the whole month in December, it was just us, yeah, we were long distancing across time zones, you know. Mm-hmm. But the fact that this person was willing to accommodate me and, you know, make time for me, for me, that was like, okay, if he really wants to make this work, let's see how this goes, okay. Mm. Um, and then now comes the beginning of the year, and then we realize that we've both been accepted, but in totally different universities. And yeah, so we're in different provinces, not just different cities, we're in different provinces. Yeah. And yeah, I, I, I don't know what's happening because now in just this one month, like I've fallen hard for this person. Yeah. And it, it's, it's taken me by surprise because, um, the previous relationship that I had been in, my uh, the person had passed away. So, oh, okay. yeah, I and with that relationship, it was something that I had thought that was going to be for life. And yeah. then, well, God took that person, and then now I've fallen for this person. So I'm like, oh, okay, mm. all right. So I'm not willing to let go of this relationship because, yeah. yeah you know um and we we speak about it like and then he's like i've never done long distancing and long distance relationships and i'm I'm really not into them mm-hmm. um but for you and what we have i'm willing to give this a try so mm-hmm. okay so we see it and we plan and we're like okay so we're gonna see each other this often but for now we need to acclimatize um ourselves to you know, our respective new environments mm-hmm. and then when everything is settled, then this is how often we're going to see each other and we promise that we're going to be communicating and all that. How? Okay. You know, everything is, is nice, man. Everything is going great. Mm-hmm. And I, th- I think that first year, um, we managed to do everything as, as, as we had planned. The, the only problem in that year was that there was this girl, man. Ish. Mm-hmm. Let's call her. Let's call her Sophia, since we're going on the okay. anonymous route. Here. Mm-hmm. Now, Sophia apparently is from. Okay, so both of us in South Africa, we are immigrants. Mm-hmm. Okay, and he's also coming from a different country. Mm-hmm. And now, this girl apparently is from. You know, is from his country as well. And mm-hmm. we're like, oh, cool. Um, and she needs help. She doesn't have any friends. And, and, and uh, I'm chilled. At that point, I'm not, I'm not even worried because I've got lots of guy friends. I've got more guy friends than girlfriends. So I'm chilled about this. Mm-hmm. Now, the problem is there's too many stories about this girl. And this girl just wants help way too many times. And so <laughs> not many friends. Um, <laughs> I need to ask a question. What sort of help does she need from, from, from Bokang? And if she wanted to talk about she, what? Ah, about apparently she she'd been through some trauma and 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 stuff. And initially, I was actually understanding because apparently she had been abused um, mm-hmm. sexually, mm-hmm. and sexual abuse is something that I'm very passionate about. So when she initially told me about this, I'm like, dude, like she needs help. Talk yeah. to her, you know, like yeah. yeah. But then now. They, 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 there's too many changes in the story and, and, and sometimes it's just the way she acts. I mean, she this, this person is, is, is calling my boyfriend way too often and is hanging out at his place way too often. And I haven't been at my boyfriend's place, but this girl is going there. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is not sitting right with me, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep it in. But then he's also complaining, you know, every time we mm-hmm. talk, he's 
he's also complaining about how this girl is becoming too much and she doesn't seem to realize boundaries. But that was up to him to define the boundaries, wasn't it? Exactly, you know. Um, and, and I think I, I, I ignored that, you know. And, and now I'm mad at the girl. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't say anything. But there's one time when we're talking and I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of getting sick of, you know, every time you complain about this girl, if you're really not unhappy with it, you know, just, just handle it yeah. in your way. Yeah. Because now it's getting to a point where we could be, it could be a, a video call on Skype or something. And then the next thing she calls and then we have to end our discussion so that he attends to her mm. every time. And I'm like, I'm starting to wonder, you know, like, is there anything else that's going on between you and this girl? You know? What would he say when you asked him that question? He then said that I was being dramatic. Hmm. Ha. Now I'm sitting here and then I ask a few of my girls and you know, like I'm not asking directly. I'm on some. So I, I got this cousin of mine. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, did, did, did you know I'm laughing? I'm only laughing because that's a line that a, a, a number of my friends sometimes use. They're like, hey, do you know, I got this cousin of mine. I got this uncle of mine who does blah, blah, blah. Mm. But the amount of detail <laughs> that they give in the situation just yeah. makes me think, okay, dude, we know it's about you. It's about you, yeah. But so, you have to play along. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm asking my friends about um my cousin. My cousin mm. is me, but yeah. So and, and yeah, they're all like, no nah, man, something something is fishy here, mm-hmm. you know. And then I'm close to my mom and my sister, but then now I my my, my, my friends are not giving me the answers that I want. So I I, I ask my sister mm. and she gets mad. She's like, Oh, he's messing with you. Who's this girl? Like, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, no, we're not gonna do anything. But then, um, I'm just so mad at that point. But then at the same time, I've been told that I'm dramatic. I've yeah. never been dramatic. Like in my circle, I'm I'm one of the you know very calm people. So now this is this individual is telling me I'm being dramatic. Me? Mm. Okay. So now I don't want to be dramatic. So I I let it go. And yeah. um, after a while, I don't know what happens, but they the mention of um, Sophia reduces, you know, and until it becomes, well, we don't talk about her anymore. And, well, I just, I just let that go. You, and now, you, you, you were hopefully relieved at that, weren't you? Yeah, I was. Okay. Now we get to, I think it was about 18, 18 months in the relationship now. Yeah. And he starts changing on me. He he would go a day or two without talking to me. And 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 when I ask, it's like, no man, you know, school is busy. I mean, right now we're in our second year, and you know, it, it it's hectic, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Huh, okay, cool. But then now it's it, 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 it keeps going further and further. Now we're going on to um three days without communicating. Mm. And now at this point. We we had agreed that at least we see each other every two weeks, you know. Okay. Um, one travels to the other province and the other goes to the other province. You know, yeah, it was working. But then now, oh no, he's so busy. We're going days without communicating, mm-hmm. and um, it went to a point where we didn't see each other for like six, seven months. Even when I went back home and we're both in 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 Gauteng, um, which is a province where Johannesburg and Pretoria yeah. are. We we still don't see each other, you know, because he's so busy. I mean, he's leaving the country. Six or seven months. Yeah, and now the thing is, when I'm saying, okay, now I'm done with school, I'm on my way home. Like I would, I would rush to go home right after exams and not chill with my friends so that I get some time with him. Yeah. But then now, this person says, like the moment. I'm like on my way to see him. And then it's like, ah, oh, man, I have to hurry home. I'm on my way to the airport. How? Mm-mm. Okay. Right. So, so this went on for like seven months. But I, I kept making excuses. And this is where the lie started. Now, now I'm lying to my friend about communicating with him every day. And I'm, I'm, I'm lying about how, many, how often I see him. You yeah. Know? My friends are like, but then you're not 
yes, you don't post your, your life on, on social media, but even with us, you don't share your pictures with him like you used to. Yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, having such a great time, man. We didn't even get enough time to talk. You know, we didn't even think about taking pictures. <laughs> this is all yeah. this is all starting to make sense because this is your very first lesson where you said you need to be honest with yourself. It's a red flag when you start lying to yourself and other people and this is you now starting yeah. to lie to other people and making excuses for for this guy. Exactly. Ah. Exactly. So now it, it and it goes on for a while and then after the six, seven months of us not seeing each other, then yeah, we get to see each other again. But I feel a shift, you know? But mm. now I'm getting scared because I think the other thing for me um, with this relationship, yes, I loved him, mm -hmm. but I don't want to let go of it because I've just decided that after my previous loss, this is it. Yeah. Like, he's the one, you yeah, know? Yeah. Um, but then um, he then breaks up with me. Whoa. Like, and, and, and the funny thing is I'd seen him the previous weekend. Yeah. And there was nothing. Yes, there was, I could tell that there was something, but then at the same time, we were good, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. um, or so I thought. And then now I'm back at school. And then in the morning when he knows that I've got um, an assessment exam that very day, he calls me to tell me that we are done. Jeez. I remember, like, I, I just got really weak. I mm. collapsed, like, from, from the shock of it. It was like, whoa, okay. And then after that, I, I, I went to school. Um, and, and I think I, I was just still in disbelief. And, and, I'm, and I'm guessing doing that assessment for you must, must have been near impossible. Oh no, I compartmentalize, so it's oh, fine. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm okay at that point. I, I'm not going to do anything to jeopardize my books. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but, oh, another thing, before that, before this whole incident, um, the breakup and the six, seven month break, mm -hmm. um, there was a time, you know, when he started his whole thing of not communicating with me, um, it affected me emotionally such that he, I, I was starting to have anxiety and panic attacks. Whoa. And and that was a first for me. Yeah. So when the doctor says, what is going on? And then I, I went back to my place and then I was reflecting. And then I'm like, no, man, um, I can't be in a relationship that is affecting me this much. Mm. So at that point, I was still willing to save myself. And then I called him and I was I was very hysterical. Mm. Um. And, and then he calmed me down and made promises, which he broke two weeks later um, yeah. and continued with the whole thing of not communicating with me constantly. But I think at that time, my brain is sort of like getting used to this treatment. It's, it's, it's not okay, but okay, it's all right, you know? Yeah. Um, so now, okay, let's go back to the breakup happens and all, thinking we're done. And then I go, I attend a party um, for a friend and uh, during this party, my, my friend goes to um, the, the, the ZCC church. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't know how to describe it, but yeah, yeah it's the ZCC church. And mm -hmm. with the ZCC church, they've got these people that they call, they're not really prophets, but they are seers. Um, okay. Somehow this person comes through at the party and the moment, apparently the moment he walked through the gate, he started describing what I was wearing and he's looking for me. Whoa. Okay. And so people then, they, they direct him to me and then he finds me. And then he starts saying stuff about, um, say some stuff about me, which is very private. That makes me think, okay, this is stuff that nobody knows. Yeah. So, okay, I'm willing to listen. And then he goes, oh yeah. And your boyfriend, I'm like, uh, no, I'm, I'm single at the moment. Um, I'm, I'm not in a relationship. We broke mm. up. And he goes, Okay, don't, 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 don't cut me off, but your boyfriend. I'm like, hmm, okay. And then he says some stuff about him. And he's like, okay, so he's in danger, yaddy, yaddy. Um, you need to talk to him wow. about A, B, and C. Now, I sit with my best friend. I'm like, honey, what do I do with this situation? And hmm. she's like, I don't know, man. You guys are, that means you guys are pretty connected. Huh? I'm thinking, now I have to call him. 
because some of the stuff that was mentioned, I'm I'm privy to those things. And yeah. Now I'm worried about him. And okay, fine. So I I call him and I say, listen, this is gonna sound weird, but this is what happened. And this is what I was told. Mm. So you do with that information what you are. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And then and then I thought that was it. That was that was a very nerve-wracking conversation. I was actually shaking in that conversation, but yeah, so that happened. Understandably. So so just confirm this guy was a complete stranger to you. Mm, mm. Jeez, that's uh yeah. that's a big creepy, isn't it? It is a little creepy, but I think at the same time I was like okay with it because yeah. um I'm also um a, a traditionalist, so yeah. I understand that things happen sometimes. Okay. It's just for me it was weird how I mean this is an this is an ex boyfriend, you know? Yeah. And ah, you know. Mm. But yeah, so I let it go. But then three weeks later he calls and he goes, Oh yeah, um I'm very close to your campus. I need to see you. Oh mm. why? Because no, because what's been happening is I see random girls and I run up to them thinking they are you and it's not you. Oh, okay. And I'm still I'm not gonna lie. At that point, I'm still I'm still hurting, and I still have feelings for this person. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. So we we meet up and we talk, and ah man, he was very good with his words, and I was back in. <laughs> angry. Yes, they they call that charm. But, <laughs> yeah. Mm. And my friends were angry. My mom, my mom was not happy about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she's like, okay, you know what? It's your life. But um, yeah. I'm just not understanding. Uh, and then start dating. Now, the first three months are still fine. The, then the, 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 the non-communication starts again. Again, yeah. Uh, and when I ask him about it, he goes, no, the thing is, I'm very busy. I mean, you know, I'm going to um, inherit my father's company and... You know, I'm already starting to get a lot of responsibilities so that I learn how to manage the business. Mm-hmm. And I've got my other project and then I've got school. And I'm here like, but nigger, I'm out here with a double degree yeah. with three internships and I still make time for you. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, listen, I, I, it, it's fine if you do not call me, but I just want you to text me and tell me that you are all right. Because I get worried. Yeah. So I just want you to let me know that you're right. I don't even want you to check up on me. I want you to tell me you're fine. Just to text, just to say, I'm okay. That would be fine. Mm-hmm. But he still fails to do that. And now, sometimes he disappears. And I sometimes get calls from his friends. Like, hey, where is... Yeah. Bukang? Mm. You know? I'm like, he, he's there. It's just, he's, he's very busy. But now I'm lying and at the back of my mind, I'm thinking, is he really fine? Because he's from a very highly political family. Okay. And so now I'm worried about that. Like, is he fine? And there was some, um, back in his country, there were some tensions. Now I'm watching the news. I'm looking for him, you know, and and as I'm reading the newspapers, I'm looking for his surname just to see his family has been implicated because I'm not getting anything from him. Yeah. Gets too much that I think this time it went for three weeks without talking to him. And I'm sending texts, I'm calling, nothing. And then I'm like, okay, I'm even sending emails, nothing. And then I I reach out to his sister. I'm like, um, you might be busy, but then could you make time for me? And and we talk. And yeah. something I want to yeah, but she's like, oh no, cool. It's fine. We're gonna talk. Um, call me at lunchtime. Last time I arrives, I call her, and uh, we we have what I I thought was a good conversation because all I wanted mainly was to find out what's going on with this guy. Mm. And she's no, I'm gonna talk to him, but he's been acting a bit. I think there's there's something wrong with him. Okay. Cool. Mm-hmm. And that evening, um, I had gone home. And um, I'm sitting with my family and then I get a call from a number that I don't know. Mm -hmm. And the moment I say hello, this older woman starts shouting and cursing at me. Whoa. I'm sure. What is happening? And now while I'm still trying to sort of like make sense of what's happening, 
an older man also takes the phone and he continues on this tirade where I'm being personally attacked. And then I hear things like, what do you want from our family? Like you're attacking us, you're harassing our son. Um, and now you're also harassing our daughter. Ha! What? And at this time I'm sitting next to my mother. Yeah. So my mom is getting pissed off as well. Now she takes my phone and she goes off like, you're not going to call my daughter and insult her. I don't know who you are or what you're calling about, but this is not on. Yeah. You know, then, okay, that conversation ends. They, they hang up and I'm, I'm, I'm so shaky. And then about 10 minutes later, he calls the boyfriend mm. and uh, he says, uh, yeah, um, why did you call my sister? Like, what the hell is going on? I'm like, I just wanted to find out about you. Yeah. But I have, I texted your sister and she said I could call. At this time, I'm like, yeah, but then you know my sister, um, she's um, she's got psychological problems. I'm like, you never told me about that. I didn't know. Yeah. And from our conversation, I, I don't see anything that I might have said that might have triggered, Yeah. Or, you know, whatever problems that she might have. But now he's mad at me. And then after a while, now I'm apologizing and um, I'm texting his mom and dad to apologize. Yeah. And my mom walks into my room while I'm, I'm busy um, doing all this. And she's like, what are you apologizing for? I'm like, well, clearly I made them mad. And she's like, no, they were wrong. That's not how we behave in our culture. And you, you just do not do that. Like, mm-hmm this thing with this guy has to end because clearly he doesn't respect you and his family doesn't, you know, yeah. so, so why should you guys be together? Yeah. I don't know. I still want to hold on to this guy. Um, and, and he doesn't really, you know, in his explanations of why he's not communicating, just to say, oh, um, my grandmother passed away. And mm-hmm. then when I think back None of his grandmothers were alive at the time, but they now. Uh, oh, okay. His grandmother who passed away. Yeah. How? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm like, okay, now I'm thinking maybe my memory is the one that's failing me. Maybe I'm the one who's, you know, now being paranoid. And so I still stick around and um, things go bad and there's a lot of tension between us. Mm-hmm. And then I decide, you know what? I'm going to lose my virginity. This is. Three, four, three, four years into the relationship, mm-hmm. I decided, I mean, he's, he's waited for a while and he's never pressured me. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, no, but um, I, I'm going to say this. I, the, 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 the having sex with him was a personal choice. It wasn't due to me being pressured by anyone, but I just wanted him to be the one who, yeah. So... Why did you want a man who appears to be absent when you need him the most to be the one I, to I, have such a precious part of you? I, I really don't know. I, at, at, at the time, it still felt like nobody could get me like he he would. And I, I was now starting to feel like I was damaged and that there was something wrong with me. So did you perhaps think that having sex with him would fix that? No, it, 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 the, the sex part, it was my attraction and my attachment to him sort of like made me feel like if I don't, I, I don't want anyone else but him to, to have that. Okay. And, what, and, and um, yeah, so. what I would have thought um, would have been it would have made a bit more sense. This is just me speaking from my perspective. It, it would have mm-hmm. made a bit more sense for you guys to actually have that uh, moment when you were still very happy and attached to each other and seeing each other frequently exactly. because the chemistry and the energy was high and good enough for that sort of thing to happen. Mm-hmm. N- not when you were at a very low point because then it just makes the reason for doing it seem like it was your way of trying to get him to reconnect and re-engage with you. That's just how it comes across to to me. I think think in all honesty, subconsciously, that's the reason why I did it. Okay. 
but I remember um, after having sex, uh, and he's driving me home, mm -hmm. and he says, you know, us having sex does not mean that, um, does not change things between us. Mm. And then I was like, what do you mean it does not change things between us? Is there anything that needs to be changed? And then he goes, well, I mean, there's been some tension. And you you also are aware of it. And I'm like, um, yeah, but I just did it. I, it. It wasn't for anything. I just did it because I felt like I was ready. Yeah. He was like, good to know. That's good. Like, he was very cold. And um, at the time, I... I don't know, man. And then I, I still went back to school and then we still continued the relationship, but things kind of got better. No, things got, yeah, things got better. So it was like, yay, okay, okay. now we're back on. Um, um, before but before we delve into into that, this this is starting to feel like your lesson number two, where it says don't break your principles for anyone. So, was 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 celibacy and keeping yourself for 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 marriage one of your core principles? Yes, it was okay. Yeah, it was okay. Right, yeah, go on. Okay, so um, now. This, this relationship goes on for a while and now I've, I've made peace with the fact that we don't communicate every yeah. day. Yeah. It's now become normal for me to lie, whether it's to my friends or to his friends. Mm. Like I'm lying to everybody. Yeah. You know, how are you doing? Oh, he's fine. I'm, I'm making up stories. I'm going out on trips with other friends. Um, you know, when you've got different um groups of friends. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm going places with other people and then I've got pictures of those areas and when I show them to these other people, it's like, yeah, I was I was with him. Okay. I'm, I'm making up tales. I'm, my mom asked about this relationship and I, I'm making up stories. I'm buying myself gifts and saying he bought them. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it was that intense. Wow. <laughs> and so now... I finished with school and I'm back with him and and we are at his place. Now, first off, uh, when, when I get the, the place is a bit of a mess and he knows I'm, I'm, I'm a neat freak now. Yeah. yeah. And his place is messy. Okay, cool. And then I see, I see when, when I go to the bathroom, there's all this stuff that belongs to, like it's, it's cosmetic products for, for, for women. For, for hair and and I'm like, what's this hair stuff doing here? So I I just need a bit more context here. So when you say you went to his place, is is this a place where he lived on his own, or this was his family home? His place where he lived on his own. So his own apartment. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but now what's happening is I'm done, but he's still at school. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then now when I get to his place now, he's got these female hair products, and I look at the brands. I'm like. I, I know in my head, none of his sisters will use that, you mm, know? Mm. I'm like, and then he goes, oh, no, um, some friends came through and they were using my place because you know how my place is closer to school and mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. people are actually cost and it's exam time. So this is a story. It doesn't make sense, but I make it make sense to me. I'm like, huh, yeah. okay. Cool. And then later on in the day, I see... As I'm tidying up, I see I see condoms. Mm. This packet is open, and I'm like, and then sir, and then we don't use this. What's happening is like my friends. I'm like your friends are so relaxed at your place, huh? Yeah, like, yeah. But now, no, the alarm bells are ringing so much, and yeah. they are refusing to be silenced at this time. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Okay, and then I, I continue tidying up, and he's like, "Why are you searching?" I'm like, "I'm not searching. I'm just tidying up." He's like, "Yeah, but then you're not my maid. I'll clean the. I'll call the cleaning service to come mm. and clean up. You don't need to do that." I'm like, "But I am here now, and I cannot leave. It. I cannot sit in such a place. Like it's just, it's not on." And uh, yeah, there's some tension, but I decide, okay, let me make peace. Let's let's just sit. And um, 
he tries to get intimate with me mm. and I kind of go with the floor. But in the middle of the sex, he, he zones out. Like he zones out. So mm. I just push him away from me and I go and I wash up and then he sees that I'm leaving and he goes, you know, my uncles have been talking about um, coming to your place. So uh, we need to sit and discuss as to how things are done in, in, in your in your culture because we were, we are from different tribes. So yeah. I'm like, I'm like, huh, okay. So your uncles want to come through. He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's, um, it's time. I'm like, yeah, I think it's time for me to leave. Because in that moment, in that moment when he is, oh, I don't know, doing his proposal or whatever, I try and imagine him as my husband. Mm -hmm. And it's this person who is so detached, someone who lies, someone who disrespects me. Mm -hmm. And I decide, nah, it's not worth it. Like, if it means I'm not going to be loved the way I want to be loved, and if um, my my ex at that time, the one who passed away, yeah. was it for me, then it's fine. But I, I can't settle for this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what was the reaction when you said you were just going to leave? Because uh, clearly you, you, you weren't excited about his proposal, which, which felt a bit weird. You proposed yeah. via his uncles, pretty much. You know, he spoke about, yeah. uh, about his uncles coming you know? to your family and, and talking to your family yeah. and seeing how things are done. So, how, so what mm. was his reaction when he saw that you weren't interested and you were, you were leaving anyway? He, he really didn't take it seriously. He thought, I think for him, I was really that girl who will always go back to him. Okay. So for him, it was like, oh, she's mad. And he's like, okay, let me drive you. I'm like, no, it's okay. Um, I'll, 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 I'll call an Uber for myself. I'm, I'm going to go home by myself. I don't want to talk to you. Mm. And, um, and I just left. And then he... He tried where he, oh, next thing he arranges for, like, we're still communicating. Mm -hmm. And for my birthday, he says, mm, at that time I started working and he's like, I'm going to come and collect you from work. So, and then we're going to go and celebrate your birthday. Mm -hmm. I'm not really good at celebrating my birthday, but he pushes for it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, cool. And my birthday at that time was on a Friday. Now, the whole day, he does not communicate. He does not say anything. Mm -hmm. And then I I get a notification on Instagram, and I see that he's at the airport. How? Mans is on his way to China. He said nothing to me. Wow. And that was kind of like the last time we spoke. And for me, it was like the end. Like, it was like, there's no way. Like, that's final, you know. And I'm never going back to him. Rah. And then two years later, this is how much this man was, this is how cocky he was and how much he thought that any time he says, run back to me, I'm going to run. Yeah. And that's how, I feel like that's, that's just proof enough of just how low I had gone. Because two years later, he hits me up and he says, I can't believe we're done. I don't think it's possible for us. <laughs> I mean, we didn't talk for two years, you know, and I still can't believe we're done, you know. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe we're done. Wow. I'm like, huh? Say so what now? And he's like, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just driving and I'm listening to the song and I feel heartbroken. I'm like, two years later, you're heartbroken. So, because, yeah, it hit so no. basically he flew out to China and you guys didn't talk at that point. Yeah. Because I, at that time I, I was at a point where I would not try to reach out to him. Yeah. If he doesn't call me or text me, it's That's like, it. ah, it's mine. Mm. I'll hear from him whenever, you know? Yeah. So when he went and everything, it was just like, ah, oh, okay, cool. And um, because we had a lot of mutual friends at that time, like I, I knew when he was back and everything. Yeah. But, uh, I started distancing myself to from from those friends that were more his friends than mine. It was like it's mm -hmm. fine, you can take them all. Yes, it was a divorce of sorts, and I just divided everything. Like, yeah. it's okay, just, yeah. just go. And and then he goes, "What? Tell me, are you in a relationship?" I'm like, "No." He goes, "Yeah, 
it's hard to walk away from a love like ours again. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, it, it's a. Uh, <laughs> So I, I think for me that that relationship that that was basically it, but that relationship for me was um, it it showed me also how because throughout that whole time yeah. I had time to, I suspected that he was not faithful. Yeah, yeah. And that for me always made me feel like I was not enough and had me trying to be more. And if I would complain about something and he tells me that I'm nagging, yeah. then it's like, no, I'm not a nag. I hate nags. I'm not a nag. And now I'm trying to prove that I'm not a nag. So yeah. I, I swallow my pride, you know, uh, and I, whatever discomfort or anger that I'm feeling, mm-hmm. then I just like push it back. And if he does something and I'm not happy about it and he tells me, and maybe he knew what it is that he was doing. So yeah. Tell yeah. Man. He almost sounds like he's um is one of those guys who got away with being unfaithful and not being caught out. Mm. Because I, I I really don't get what could have been occupying his time so much that he didn't have a couple of seconds just to drop you a text to say hey how are you I'm thinking about you I miss you. Yeah. You know, and for I, you guys to be guys yeah. And, and they're for, like. Nah. And for you guys to be in the same province and not see each other for six, seven months, I don't know. It just just feels very, very yeah, strange. Mm. So where is he now? Oh, he calls every now and then mm-hmm. to check. Yeah, because okay. he, he realized that I'm, I'm I'm now in a new relationship. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he he would call to check in because we are apparently we're friends. Yeah, I think he just. Yeah. I think he still wants to get a feel of how much control he still has over you. Yes, um, he's, he's trying to find. You know, it sounds it. like that's a, that's a pretty big thing for him. Thank you very much, Ayan. Uh, and and I'll just play back the the highlights of this. Um, Ayan was in a fairly long term relationship. I mean, you're talking about four years. How long were you guys together in total? Six. Six years. Wow, that's a long time. You know. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, Ayan was in this relationship with uh, Bokang for six years. Uh, she picked up that, um, you know, you need to be honest with yourself. And the moment you start lying about bits and pieces, those are red flags about your situation. And do not compromise the principles that you have for yourself because those are what make you as an individual and that's what makes you different and special. And what I think I like the most out of the things you spoke about is the meaning behind the name Bokang. So Bokang means uh, be thankful. And in this particular episode, Ayan is very thankful for the experience that she had because now she knows never to sell herself short. And maybe perhaps that's the key takeaway that I would like people listening to this episode to take away. That if you're in a situation right now that is making you sell yourself short, think about Ayan and Bokang. Do not sell yourself short in any one moment and at any opportunity that you have to try and get yourself out and fix things. Go ahead and grab it. Well, uh, you've been listening to another Phoenix Station podcast. I'm your host, Tinto, and I look forward to catching you in the next episode. Peace. Uru doi motor no to kujiziru amai Kujiziru amai Love is a fire Uru doi motor no to kujiziru amai